I'm Tico Ohms, and I have 151 followers, and after Sarah's talk, I was feeling a little insecure, so please make that right. <laughs> I want to start by talking about epidemiology. Epidemiology is the study of harmful diseases that are contagious. So when a virus starts affecting a community, they call in health scientists, and a health scientist's job is to study the virus, its nature, its source, its origins, and the vehicles by which it goes from place to place. And the job of the health scientist is to try to contain that virus. It's a really tough job, but they're often able to do it. That's if the vi virus is a hazard. Now let's flip it. Imagine you find a virus that has great benefits to health and society. It improves your well-being, your quality of life. Now your job becomes even more exciting. Your job is to figure out how to facilitate the growth and spread of that virus. Something like this, maybe. It was a challenge that started off to raise awareness and raise funds for ALS, and they did a great job. So now let's take it one step further. Let's call that virus a really, really good idea that's happening in your school, in some corner of your school. How many of you haven't seen really innovative, progressive work somewhere in your school and it doesn't go anywhere? So now, your job becomes to figure out what are the conditions under which that virus is most likely to spread throughout the school. And whether you're a teacher, teacher leader, tech leader, or administrator, all of us can help create the conditions for the spread of the virus. So, many things have been tried, and many things have failed. So let's talk about some of those. You can't make people want to catch this virus, right? If you try to intimidate and scare and force people to catch it, it's actually going to form a backlash because in order to catch this virus, you have to like risk-taking and you have to make yourself vulnerable and this kind of atmosphere does not create those conditions for growth. As a matter of fact, it might create conditions for sabotage of this virus. Secondly, you can't incent people to want to catch this virus. We all come from schools where teachers love their kids and they want to do great things for their kids. If you need to offer them money to do what they really want to do anyway, you know you've already gone wrong somewhere. Money is not the answer. Thirdly, and this is one that people really like, is the brave heart speech. If I could just find the right words, I will incent everyone to do this. And you may have tears in the audience and you'll have a standing ovation but unless you address the structures and the systems and the culture of your school, it's going to be a short-term benefit and things will go back to normal. So, what are some things that would work? Well, just like if the virus is harmful, what you want to do is isolate everyone from each other. If you want the virus to grow and spread, you've got to knock down walls both literally and figuratively. You need to get people to work together. And the second benefit of that is the courage that it takes to take this risk. It's easier to be done in groups rather than in isolation. Second thing that you could do is model that behavior. You be the lead learner. You take risks. You make yourself vulnerable. You try new things. You fail publicly. Pick up the pieces. Try to do it better. If you model that behavior, it would encourage others to do the same. The third one's hard. You have to change culture. And changing culture is really difficult but one effective way is celebrating the right things. Be purposeful and intentional in what you celebrate. Celebrate great teacher work that is risk-taking and progressive. And this is harder than you think, because other teachers are going to resent the teachers that are getting the attention. And Rick DeFour, um, Rick DeFour the, the kind of guru of professional learning communities, has this great story about when he was a principal at, at his school, Adlai Stevenson, and he started trying to put together this culture of celebrating the right things. And then he got this backlash, and finally a teacher came to him and said, Rick, you know, when you celebrate particular teachers' work, it makes some of us feel like you like some teachers more than you like others. And Rick thought about that for a second, and he said, you know, actually, I do like some teachers more than I like others. 
And he carried on uh, with the idea. So you've learned a lot of cool things at Learning 2. It's been amazing. It's been thick. And you're going to go back to your school and you're going to want to implement some of these new ideas, right? And so your job is to figure out what are the conditions under which these good ideas are most likely to spread throughout the school. And if you figure that out, you're on your way to becoming a more innovative school. Thank you very much.